All right, Jesse on Fire, welcome back to the channel. I just keep on getting these meals put on my plate that are like, here, this is a really good promotion, fight promotion story or whatever that you could talk about. I'm like, all right, because Ryan Kavanaugh from Triller, he wants a death match with Dana White. I mean, I can't figure it out. Oh, he's calling, oh, he's calling out Dana White. He says Dana White doesn't know how to put on a promotion. He's got a rusty cage and he doesn't pay his guys and Dana needs to learn from him how to put on a show. Yeah, I, gosh, what, what do you think he's doing? What do you think the strategy is here? I can't figure it out. This is the first time anyone has ever implemented a, a strategy like this. It looks like, you know, he's like, look, here, here's the invitation that we sent to Dana and he ignored it. Can you guys believe that? Jeez, looks like he's scared of Triller. It's like, you guys charged $3 for that fight, okay? Now the fight was awesome, let me just say that. I very much enjoyed that fight, okay? So I'm not hating on the Triller uh, production value or the fights themselves. I was very entertained. I was shocked by how entertained I was. Let me say this though you almost did it right. Like where you, it was like, I was just waiting for you guys to blow it with the music, right? Like it's like, we got Metallica. I was like, why would you do that? <laughs> okay, why would you do that? No one's paying for that, dude. No one, these are fights. And every single fight I was like, when are they gonna like just destroy this with an intermission with a bunch of songs? And then you didn't do it until after the second to last fight. And I didn't even really care about the Frank Mir fight. So when you, you know, toxified the entire event with like a really long musical set, I already didn't care about that because I already watched Mike Perry fight, so it didn't matter. So in the future, I would just say, stop putting fucking musical shows on your fights. Just don't do it. It's never worked, dude. Remember Megadeth at Affliction? It wasn't cool. It was never been cool. No one's ever liked it. It's never gotten good reviews. No one is ever going to pay for a fight card with music. If someone wants to watch the music, then while the fights are on, they're like, oh my gosh. Oh my, oh my God, how do people watch this? Or fight people are like watching fights, it's like, Jesus Christ, fucking Metallica, are you serious? Saweetie, Saweetie. I, I didn't even know that was a person until their last stupid card when they put her on, okay? So just scrap that. Anyway, but, so what do you think he's doing here, you know? Talking to Dana like that, you don't know how to promote a fight. You need to learn from me with your rusty ass cage. Um, he's doing the thing that I was partially, partially telling you know Dustin to do, although not exactly, actually only barely, and I'll explain that in a second. But he's doing the thing that you do when you are trying to be a shark and you need a great white shark to anoint you a shark, right? So like if you trap someone into a beef, then it only benefits the smaller person. So like as an example, right? Let's say that I spent the rest of this video talking about how I think Chael has no position being at the top of the game in the, you know, fight promote, in, in whatever we're doing, whatever I'm doing, whatever I'm doing, which I started doing because Chael put me on fan questions, right? So like, obviously I originally thought he, he owned this space. And now I'm saying, well, I don't think so. I think Chael should be submitting fan questions to me because my my takes are so much better than his, dude. Hey, maybe you need some maybe you need some lessons on YouTube, Chael. Have you noticed all the comments I'm getting about how I've overtaken you as their favorite channel? Why don't you suck on that, dude? I invited you to my house, you didn't even come. You got anything to say about that? Or are you just gonna sit up there in Oregon and cry with your mommy, huh? So let's say I spent the rest of the video doing that, right? And I got Chael mad enough that he did a response video. He was like, this fucking Jesse on fire guy, <laughs> this guy's a joke, man, okay? He started this channel because of his, because he, I let him on fan questions. Now, I probably can't, you know, Chell's got his own style and I'm sure it would be amazing. But who wins in that situation? Let's say he eviscerated me on his video response. Do I, does, does he win? You know, people are like, damn. Okay, I win no matter what, okay? Yeah, I win no matter what. There's nothing he could, there's no response he could give where I don't win, okay? I win. I, that my entire goal was to get you to respond. You are the big fish. I am the small fish trying to get, Pish? What's a pish, dude? Learn how to fucking talk. If you're gonna be talking about talking trash, don't call fish pish, idiot. Anywho, right? So like, if I'm trying to get bigger and Chael is huge and he talks about me and I get bigger, who wins, right? Is there anyone who's going to, like, because I talked about Chael, be like, yeah, I think it's time for me to go, you know, subscribe to Chael's channel. Every metric that drives success is gonna be driven in the right direction for me if he responds, okay? So obviously that's what Ryan's doing, okay? He made up an invitation. So he didn't even you know, do my invitation. Here's the thing. So the thing about Dustin I was talking about. So how many, how many MMA outlets are reporting on this? The Triller CEO has called Dana a little bitch. He said Dana's a little bitch. Everybody is, right? Literally all of the MMA outlets are, are commenting on this. Can you believe Ryan Kavanaugh called, called Dana White a little bitch and said he doesn't know how to promote shit? Can you fucking believe that? Unbelievable. Almost like they're the most predictable fucking people on earth, right? Almost like if you get to a certain position, you can just play them like a fiddle, you know? Almost like 
the entire mechanism that is MMA media and the people who watch it are so predictable that if you had a person who was a strategic genius, they could play them like a fucking fiddle day and night, right? Now, this is not rocket science, you know? Yeah, Dana, oh, I'm the new, the new promoter on the, Dana's a little bitch. <laughs> oh, yeah? Oh, Dana doesn't know how to promote a fight, okay? It's ridiculous, okay? It's so predictable. So the only way that Dana loses is if he responds. Like, it's the only way that he loses. Now, what I was saying, though, is everybody is reporting on this, right? Because, obviously, they are. So, hypothetically, I know I've talked about this every single day. I can't get off into it. I just can't. But like I was saying about, you know, hey, Dustin, so after you fight Charles, how do you feel about this fight that you have with Conor McGregor? He says it's not over. He said, you're a little bitch. And Dustin's like, that guy's not even on my radar. And I was like, sacrilege, sacrilege, okay? So, in the same vein, had he said... Are you kidding me? Fill in the blank with all the things that I've been suggesting. Super negative. Fuck Connor. Blah, blah, blah. The, the more aggressive he does it, the better. How would the media have covered him then? You know, you think, he, you think if, if this Ryan Kavanaugh guy can get some press for saying Dana White doesn't know how to promote. You know, if Dustin was like, uh, I have a lifelong blood feud with Connor McGregor and it's never going to be over. I'm going to fucking kill him when I see him. You think that might have gotten a little bit of press? And then maybe somewhere down in those articles, they would have been like, and when's your next fight? He's like, it's in two weeks. I'm fighting for the, for the title. It's like, oh. And then like, if I was like, hey, do you think that that, like those articles, which then included the fact that you're fighting in two weeks for the title, do you think that'd be good or bad for your promotional career? <laughs> like, you think that's gonna get people to buy more pay-per-views or do you think that like, it'll just stay the same? Probably more. Yeah, I know. I know, I know, definitely more. Like, definitely more. And again, I just wanna make this clear. The only reason that I keep harping on this Dustin Poirier thing is because I fucking love that guy, man. Like, if, if this sounds like me being negative towards Dustin, it's the opposite, dude. This is just the way that I talk when I'm passionate about things. And I love me some Dustin Poirier. I would love to see him win every single fight for the rest of his fucking career. I just would also like to see him maximize his earnings. And like, you know, so. And you don't have to feel self-conscious if you want to implement my strategy now. Like, I know it looks like a lot of people have seen this, you know, 30,000 people. That's not that many people, dude. Like, as it relates to like the fucking, I mean, you sell 2 million pay-per-views, what's 30,000? Fucking nothing. Only, only you know, 30 to 50,000 people will know, like, that was Jesse's idea. That was brilliant. Fucking brilliant promotions. But, uh, but anyway, so yeah, so John Kavanaugh, he's doing something good. He's got, a, or Ryan Kavanaugh, whatever. He's got a really convenient name, you know? his name, his last name sh being shared with Connor's coach. Like that's how, like, like Connor's like a planet that people orbit around. I actually heard someone say that about Joe Rogan. They were like, Joe Rogan's like a planet. Like there are all these guys that have big careers just because they're friends with him. And like he gets, they get to go on JRE and so people get to know their personalities, which by the way, you know, uh, when I've said over and over and over, like I'll know that I've made it, like I've made it when I'm sitting at Joe Rogan experience, which hundred percent will happen, especially since I live five minutes from him. But, uh, and the reason that I say that is because I am absolutely certain of what the outcome will be. Like, I just know that reach, that audience, I'm gonna blow up. It's just, it's, it's inevitable. But those guys, like, so Joe Rogan's like a planet. How did that end up about the, anyway, whatever. So Conor McGregor is also like an MMA planet. So just the fact that this guy shares a last name with Conor's coach ends up, people are like, wait, who said that about Dana? It's like, it's already gone past their I don't care filter and now they're looking at it, you know? So anyway, I mean, look, can you think of anybody else who recently just used a similar tactic to this that, uh, or someone, you know, like someone else that, he's actually following someone else's, you know, um, uh, method. But how about Cody Dirty Durden? Remember Cody Durden? Remember, remember like three weeks ago when I was like, hey, you guys, Cody Durden's fighting. And you were like, who the fuck is Cody Durden? I was like, are you serious? It's Cody Durden, man. It's Cody Durden. How do you not know who that is? They're all, why would I know who that is? He's in the UFC. There's like 600 fighters in the UFC. But this is Cody Durden. Fuck, I don't know who the hell that is. And then in the last week, I'm like, Cody Durden, they're all the racist guy. You're all like, exactly, dude. The racist guy. Except, not really, you know? But he did implement the exact same strategy, right? Where he gets on the microphone, he's like, I gotta send him back to China, son, where he came from. And everyone was like, what, dude? Is that racism? And then remember, I was like, hey, uh, the way I framed it before was I was like, hey, do you want to help him or hurt him? But in this case, I actually want to reframe it. It's like, do you want to win or do you want to lose? Well, I want to win. Well, then shut up. What are you talking about? You win by not saying anything. He wants you to talk. Yeah, but I'm mad. Right, but do you want to win or do you want to lose? Well, I want to win. Well, you got to shut up, man. Can't say anything.
but I'm mad. I understand. That's what he was trying to do. He's trying to get you mad so you'd respond, which means you lose. Yeah, but what if I say something super clever? Still lose. Still lose. Remember what I just said about Chael? Like if Chael responds to me, I win no matter what. There's nothing, nothing. There's no, there's no scenario where I can lose if he talks about me. Mm, nope, I don't remember that. I bet you don't. You're emotional. You're not thinking straight. Don't say anything if you want to win. I can't help myself. Everybody tweeted about him. He wins, right? He wins. Um, but yeah, I just want to go back to that. There is literally nothing Chael could say that would that where I would lose. It's not possible. He could literally do a video of my wife giving him a lap dance that I didn't know about. You know, like I literally, like I didn't even know. He's like, hey, I bet you didn't know this was going on, did you? Look at this. Ooh, I didn't know she could move her hips like this. She ever do this for you? And I was, and I'm watching, and she doesn't. She doesn't do that for me. I'm like, I've literally never seen her do that. Like he, she's making things disappear in ways that I didn't realize she could do. And he's just looking at me like, hey, I bet you wish you didn't pick a fight with me now, don't you, Jesse on fire? I bet you wish you never picked a fight with old Chael Sonnen. And I would be like, man, this is fucking gold. I'm gonna pretend to be super upset because the more upset I am, the more eyeballs I'm gonna get. I can't lose. You just need to understand the incentive structure. I don't care about anything except what my subscriber base is. So go ahead, you know, make things, make her have everything disappear. I don't care, dude. I win no matter what. I win. Now in that case, he probably wins. But that would never happen. Try it. Just kidding. Don't. No, 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 don't. Please don't tell you. Just don't. Just kidding. Anyway, um, so I've probably stretched this video as long as it needs to go. So blood feud, blood feud. Is there anything else I should talk about while I'm here? I'm like uh, having a good time talking, you know? So let's see, um, anything else going on SB Nation? This is probably really important. Khabib announces big press conference for December 5th. Nuh uh, don't you fucking dare. Big press conference for December 15th in Miami, Florida. That's gotta be about Eagle MMA, right? That has to be that has to be Eagle MMA because if that's about him, I am going to cry. It's next going to be in Miami, end of January. It's going to be a big show. Don't want to announce him right now because December 15th. I'm going to, okay, okay, okay. So it's going to be about Eagle MMA. Woo! Because right now, dude, I wonder if I wonder if Dana would let Khabib come back and fight in Eagle MMA because like if if he somehow worked that into his contract, like he's like, I'll fight Connor again. I'll fight Connor again in a rematch but only if you let me fight in Eagle MMA because you want to launch a fucking, uh, you want to launch something to the stratosphere, get, have Khabib come back and fight in it. You know what I mean? And I think I think uh, Dana has some kind of upside in Eagle MMA, right? I don't know. Oh, I have, uh, I have one more thing to say. One more thing. I might even put this at the beginning of my video because I, am embarrassed that I didn't think about this in my video yesterday. So I did the video yesterday and I was saying like Nate Diaz only has one fight left on his on his agreement. Thus, you have to do the Connor and Nate fight. So I thought about it afterwards cuz like I said, I was like thinking about that as I was doing the video and then afterwards I was like, "Hmm. You know what they actually should do is they should try to use that fight to get Nate to resign." Obviously. I mean, come on, dude. I mean, like I I I hadn't like I hadn't really thought it through. I literally thought of it right a second ago and then I restarted the video started doing it again and I hadn't really thought it through and then inside of you know 10 minutes of thinking about it I was like oh god I'm an idiot what they should do is they should make Nate re-sign for a multi-fight deal in order to give him the Connor fight but they, I mean they still have to do the Connor fight but they certainly should like you don't have to worry about what he's going to do afterwards if you're going to pay him 10 million dollars to fight fucking Connor right anyway that's what I got subscribe to the channel ring the bell 